flashing red. All right, you know what that means. It's time once again for another exciting episode of X-Ray Education with your host, X-Ray Ed. Okay, so today we're going to be doing some wrist views. We're also going to be doing some forearm and some elbow. But to start with, we're going to be taking a look at some weird wrist views. Okay, so if I could, please get a victim over here. I mean, a uh, patient. If I could get a patient to come on over. All right, thank you very much, young lady. Step right up, step right up. Okay, I'm going to have my patient sit down in this chair. Now, first things first, before I forget it, shield. We're going to go ahead and put a shield on. There we go. Okay, now, it just so happens this young lady has hurt her wrist, and so she needs an x-ray of the carpal tunnel. So, in order to be able to pull this off, what I'm going to do, ma'am, if you could, just kind of extend your arm out for me. I need you to pull your fingers back like this. Okay, very good. Can you hold those with your hand? All right, outstanding. All right, and I'm going to kind of center up my image receptor a little bit. Now, is this her left hand or her right? Well, it's her left. So we're going to go ahead and put this marker on here, and we'll go ahead and mark it laterally like we're supposed to. Now, okay, for this particular x-ray, we're going to need an angulation on the tube. We're going to need a 25 to 30 degree angle. I'm just going to go with 25 because this patient is able to hold her fingers back pretty far. If she's not able to flex back like that, then, um, or I guess extend is really what it is, then I might use more angulation, but this is going to work for our purposes. Okay, so I'm going to take aim. I'm going to go about an inch above the base of the fifth metacarpal. I was about to say metatarsal, but that would be the wrong limb. Okay, so I've got her uh, fingers bent back. I'm going to roll her laterally towards her thumb about 10 degrees. Just a skosh. That's all I need. Now, do I need all this much collimation? No. We're going to collimate down relatively tightly. Okay, and I'm going to center. Yep, right there we go. Base of the third metacarpal. All right, so got my shield, got my marker. Just make sure it's outside the anatomy of interest. I am going to put it back over here. Okay, and now I'm all ready to make my exposure. Okay, excellent. So, that's going to be your gainer heart. Now, uh, Mr. Dam, what is the next thing on our list that we're supposed to be doing? Stature. Stature method. Okay, cool. So this is another uh, wrist x-ray that's not all that often done, but it's one of those things that's uh, a very, very handy skill to have. So what I'm going to be doing is just taking a picture of this patient's scaphoid bone which I know, I can't really palpate it, but I know it's somewhere between the radius and the thumb, so right in there is where it's going to be. So what I'm going to do is just get my patient to put their hand up on this. Ordinarily, this would be about a 20 degree sponge. This one's 15 degrees, but you know, guess what we got. We're going to make the most of what we have. Now, am I allowed to cone down on this? Yes. Absolutely. I don't have to include all the wrist bones. Um, I just need the scaphoid and the immediately surrounding bones. Okay, so there's my marker. All right, marker, shield, and shoot. Okay, so there's that. All right, now suppose that a patient's not it, or if I don't have a sponge like this, can I still get a picture of the patient's scaphoid bone? Heck yeah. All right, what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to angle my tube. How much angulation? 10 to 15. Don't everybody answer at once. Yeah, 10 to 15 degrees. I've got 12 degrees on here. That should work just fine for this patient. And once again, aiming at the scaphoid. And am I allowed to come down? Absolutely. I don't have to include the whole wrist. I just need the scaphoid and the immediately surrounding bones. Now, what I'd like to do here is get some good ulnar deviation. There we go. Oh, I should have said that for the stature too. Some good ulnar deviation will stretch that scaphoid out and, and give it uh, more open joint spaces so I don't have superimposition. Whoops. There we go. Okay, cone down to the scaphoid and plus a little more. Okay, that should be good to go just like that. And now I've got one more of these positions that I'm supposed to be doing. The radial deviation. 
Okay, radial deviation. Now, this is an image that's not done all that often, but it's really, really easy. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to set up just like we were doing a regular wrist x-ray. In other words, I'm going to be aiming right here for the mid-carpal area, just like I would for a wrist. Marker lateral. Um, and this time, I'm going to get my patient to deviate their hand radially, in other words, towards the thumb. So if you would, just there you go. Oh yeah, that's perfect. All right, patient, hold still right there. Beep. Okay, cool. So those are four kind of, sort of, non-standard, but definitely useful to know positions for the wrist. These are like supplemental. We do three-view wrist all the time. Specific scaphoid shots, only if the doctor orders these things, you know, like in particular. You know, you would, you would definitely have an order that said scaphoid with ulnar deviation or whatever. Okay, cool. So y'all can do all this stuff yourselves? Ah, uh, yeah. Excellente. All right. Thank you all very much. That was our quick and dirty uh, supplemental wrist images. And we'll see y'all next time for more. Bye.